Rhythm of War is out. So, favorite part. I'm going to start with Ian, and I think you're going to say Navani again. I mean, (laughs) but specifically the sequence of scenes where she bonds the sibling. Up until that point, it was kind of the plan for relaying to bond the sibling. Navani is like, well, bond me. Like, I'm here. And the sibling is like, no, you're not worthy. And it's like, Navani's like, no, lies. And it was. And then the, the whole sequence of like her singing the anti void light tone, and then the two of them singing the rhythm of the tower together. Yeah. I very early on started joking about like, oh, like Navani's gonna bond the sibling. Like, yeah, it's gonna be a thing. And then, like, as the book went on, I'm like, it became more and more plausible. And like, oh, wait, this might actually be a thing in this book. Like, that, that's so cool. And then Brandon tricked me. <laughs> it made me think Relaine was going to bond the sibling. So Brandon was surprised me with something I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, it, Sanderson. It, Alex, favorite part. Oh, it's really that's really tough. Um, I think I'm going to go sort of in lockstep with Ian, but I'm going to go ahead and say Raboniel was very much a standout character for me mostly in that you know when she's first introduced and you hear like oh she developed this like biological weapon you almost get this idea of oh she's going to be sort of like a mad scientist character and you know she'll be super evil and stuff and she really wasn't she was a very nuanced character and her whole dynamic with Navani was so mutually respectful of one another and i'm so sad that i don't think we're going to get any more i mean who knows maybe brandon's gonna do something crazy and she'll come back somehow i won't can't rule anything out but i i think this was probably her book and i yeah she was just wonderful she was great never count out the herald flashbacks They've that's, spent a lot of honest, time together. That's actually a oh, really good true. point. Oh, yeah, I, nice. I would love to see more Raban, y'all. She oh, was yeah. wonderful. The The fact that we had Navani outsmarting her to land a fatal blow, but then Raban, like respects her enough that even as she's bleeding out, she attacks Moaj and probably does save Navani's life. It was a wonderful culmination <laughs> also, to their whole dynamic. Just her whole like, no, I want to finish the war, but also kills her daughter. Like, oh, oh this yeah. is really good and emotional. Like a lot of depth to her for sure. Giving giving Navani the title and like telling her what a respected scholar she is. They were amazing. They were, Th- they were Those great. two were spectacular. Such a good plot line. Loved every moment of it. David. As the Kaladin fan, I'm just going to jump in with the obvious Kaladin stuff. So if you've read the book, you probably already know what I'm going to say. There were two things that I'll hit briefly. And the first was obviously Kaladin and Hoyd, the story about the dog and the dragon. It's really that good. That was great. <laughs> the last line about saying that, you know, that there will be sunshine again. It's different from promising that there'll never be darkness. Like, oh, that was cool. That's a lot. I, I, I just like, shivered remembering how I felt with that line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then and also that it's probably on Brace at the same time. And you're yeah, like, whoa, what's like, happening? This is not good. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But is that and, what's happening? I did not I, I think it that. is. Thank Brace, you. guys. Yeah. That's probably yeah. a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the other one, I was like, OK, this is my Kaladin scene. You know, I got it. Awesome. And then the scene at the end where he has the vision of Tien. I oh. approach I approach books from an emotional distance. And it's like really rare that I have a reaction to a book. I was crying like I really I, was. I like, cried, too. I did cry, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you know, it just the, the idea of meeting his little brother as a man, like, I just it just killed me. It's like, you're good it enough so for good. me. I was like, oh, oh so good. Yeah. If I think too much about that scene, I start tearing up. <laughs> yeah, that's really that's a really good scene. The, the Calvin stuff is really good. Shannon. Um, my favorite part was when we saw Ishar's experiments on the table and (laughs) (laughs) okay, that's not my real favorite scene. Okay. Yeah. I figured, but like it it is, that's very much like a, what the F is going on here, Brandon? Like you just threw this in the end here. Like what, what is this? 
Um, it was very powerful, but um, yeah. I wouldn't call it my favorite. I, I think it has to be like the dragon and the dog. That is one that's going to be, be with me for a while. Um, with the dragon and the dog, it's Kaladin at his lowest. Like this isn't like a moment of triumph. This is just him like needing something to hold on to in, in that moment. And um, oh, I like I like I had to I had to cry and get up and walk around and stop reading a book for the rest of the night uh, and go to bed because I was like that was it was so much I was like I couldn't handle like the end of the story and he's like okay but what's what's the real ending what did the dog really say <laughs> it's just like oh, no oh it's that was so much I'm like I cried in this book more than I have ever in the rest of Stormlight combined. Like I loved Oathbringer. I did not cry during Oathbringer. I cried so much in this book. Mm. It was unreal. I'm so, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad Kaladin knows what dogs are now. Like this was so important <laughs> to me that Kaladin knows that dogs exist and that they're Boyd, wonderful. Boyd, <laughs> give Kaladin a dog. Oh, man. Kaladin <laughs> needs a real fluffy dog, not an what asshole, a, a- like a real dog. It's just like ten soon. Here you go, Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Here you go. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for all the fan art of the dog and Calvin eventually. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's gonna happen. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Matt, favorite moment. Hmm. Well, Raboniel was taken, but I mean, you can say the same thing. Like, yeah, like she is just such a solid character, and I really hope we see more of her somehow because. She wins you over like that. I think expanding from there, I just really liked a lot of the fuse stuff, honestly. Like getting to see the fused is not just the enemy and getting some nuance to characters oh, like Leshui and Benwi. So good. And the comparisons between those three I found very interesting and it really complicates the situation. I am an Adolin fan. I liked how Adolin's arc, even though it was very predictable, like Adolin's going to succeed in this task because he has to, mm-hmm. but it still had some twists and turns I wasn't expecting. And I just related to his his struggles with, you know, both not being who his dad wants him to be, but feeling like very constrained by everyone's ideas of him. Meanwhile, being like the emotional support person to <laughs> half the main cast. <laughs> so true. Yeah, so true. Uh, oh. Like his, his, I think probably my favorite moment is the scene with the star spren in Shadesmore oh, when so he gets good. Shalon to emerge. You're just like, yes, like we do want Shalon to come out. And then she, at that part, she's very much not. And then she just has to. And it was just like, oh, they get their little moment. And the star mm-hmm. spread, I can just see it in my head. And it was... Yeah. Oh, As it poses for them. Very dramatic. Yeah, poses for them. <laughs> so, That's what I want to see fan out of. My... Oof, like, there's so many great moments, but, like... I know. We chose... Oh, mm. oh, it's so good. Like I'm so mm. glad someone said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That moment is funny because I think from us be- talking on the podcast about the recreants after Oathbringer, it's like the spread kind of had to be in on it. And we, that's what we all agreed about. But it was the actual execution that was just so mm-hmm. good. Like, even though that I already knew that, but like none of the spread knew that, that, that were still alive. And so it was a surprise for them. And it's just... Oh, we got to get, uh, I think Maya's going to be revived book five. That's, that's got to be it, right? Like we're setting up for that. I don't know. I just got chills. I know. I know. It's so good. Just like giving Maya that strength, right? Oh, oh it's good. Real quick. I will say as someone who wasn't really involved in that sort of theorizing and didn't have the idea that the spread were in on it, like that was a really powerful reveal of like, mm. oh, I never thought that they would have chosen to make this sacrifice and like it's a whole new dynamic on the record i'm sure there's readers who are not the Mm -hmm. theorizing sort who are in the same boat and like it was such a powerful moment from like the reveal standpoint too was was great what a great reveal Mm -hmm. like it's Mm -hmm. really good and i also i think what helped it pay off was it fit in so well Mm -hmm. thematically with some of the other things that we're bringing up in the book like there's a real theme of people who are disenfranchised or who are quote unquote powerless and how people treat them and how 
they have agency. Like you have like the the patients uh, with mental illness who Kaladin is working with. Mm-hmm. You have you have the dead eyes who are not helpless, and that's also a theme with kind of Relaine dealing yeah. with some of the prejudice he faces. And so I think Brandon's kind of been seeding that message throughout, and then to have it tie together at such a powerful pivotal moment was just so good. Is awesome character moment with Maya and just a great reveal chills every time I have read that scene. So Mm -hmm. like love that scene so much. Earlier this week, uh, our first part of Rhythm of War reactions should have come out. And so this is our part two of reactions. And I imagine it will just be as quick and fast as the previous one. Uh, (laughs) So great. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to ask for my favorite moment. I, I don't know exactly what you guys talked about on the other episode, but I'm going to try yeah, to choose one remember. that I think I think probably no one said, but is still a highlight for me. Okay. And that is, honor is not dead so long as he lives in the heart. This is really good. Yeah. 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 Go, just go goosebumps. Just go goosebumps. <laughs> and it, was, it was so, that whole sequence was so well written to me. Like, Adolin, he ended up getting Notum on his side, not by acting the way someone like his father or Kaladin would have by giving him a disappointed look. And he, like, knows he can't do that. He just kind of stands there and goes, like, go ahead. Like, we got you in trouble. It's time for you to, like, get a chance to say what you need to and get this off your chest. And and Notum just can't do it and, like, turns. and, And then the aftermath, even without knowing, like, any of the honor spend history or what that means or like what the significance of it is i still felt the weight of those words and like felt the weight of like oh man like this just got real yeah i agree because it it feels like even in world without any of the context you feel like this is just this is not just something that that notum says this is something that he's repeating from a while back or whatever like this is this is a These words phrase. history yeah, yeah. I, I do really like the Shades Mars sequence of the trial. It's it's really good. That I mean, I'll, I'll just add on. Like my favorite scene of the book. I'm sure the others talked about it. Was was uh, we chose um, the raw emotion of that scene uh, yeah. topped. You cannot have my pain for me personally. Ooh, okay, all right. Um, it, it's really I don't good. know. I don't know what. It, and it's simple. Like there's not like a lot going on. It's just something about the way Braden wrote those wrote those words. Uh, the emotion hits me every time. I'm chilled. It got yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think one of the things that work really well for me in the Witchell's scene is is actually the build. Like you can really feel Maya's ex- anxiety mm-hmm. and tension and like escalating fear and terror. You, you know how in, in in movies when when they try to portray scenes like where somebody is is being pressured and like you you see the surrounding faces and the camera is drawing in and like there it it feels like that. But, and then Adolin was giving her strength. Was, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Evgeny, favorite moment, though? Uh, I, I am a simple man. Uh, <laughs> I see a Kaladin ideo and I, and I go for it. <laughs> 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 um, so the actual vision with Tien, while it was one of the scenes where I cried, and it like it's really powerful and 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 just filled with emotion the lead up to it where dalinar hears about what it feels like the final stand of of storm blessed where, where he jumps and he speaks with the storm father storm father is confused like well, what are you doing like i'm forging a bond and then and then we jump into the, like this this forging of, like it, it's not a powerful scene or anything but it really speaks to me and then we have the conversation. The storm father tells Kaladin that this is the final lie the enemy tells, that there is no more journey worth taking. I'm like that's that's chills material, right? Um, and then we get the vision, and the vision is nice. And then we come out of the vision and like Kaladin exploding with light. Like I, I'm always sucker for the cinematic moments, like exploding with light, and we have Windspren being pulled into the physical realm and slamming into his body, choosing to connect with him. And then as 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 they hit him, they turn into the the plates of the plate, right? And then he forms this column of of Windspren, and it just 
the storm disappears and it everything is illuminated. Just give it's this awesome. Scene to, it is, it's so give cool. This scene into my eyeballs. What, one of my, it's not, a, I don't know if there's a single favorite scene, but some of my favorite scenes in this book were the low moments. Um, Kaladin, like barely like you know uh pulling himself out of the well and like trying to climb the tower to the high storm you know 90 percent dead with downer helping him that last bit like that was that was fantastic uh navani in the moments when she realizes that the that she betrayed the sibling accidentally the scenes where she re- like when she creates the anti uh anti-light and rabonia like takes it to go off and kill people when she realizes the mistake that she's made like some of the the low moments the characters deal with in this book were my absolute favorite Mm -hmm. i don't know i just felt really gripped by those moments like Mm -hmm. calden in the weird braze vision that hoid joins it's like yes oh "Oh, you feel just the pain and then hoid's like look Things will get better. You will be warm again. And I was like, oh, oh I'm, I'm getting chills, literal chills. <laughs> uh, just just remembering that uh, because Calden's depression really spoke to me in this book. This finally matches my depression, which Calden really had not done before. So uh, it really fits. And so it's it's really nice. It's like, hey, if you're, if you're depressed, things will get better. M- might not be for a while, but it will eventually. Mm. Ben. I have, I have, I was going to say two, but I'm going to add Dragon and the Dog as a third because you just reminded me of it. It's really good. Um, I think it's the best toy story. But my two moments that I have that I couldn't pick from is one is the one where it's very on me uh, that the last Eshenai's last flight, I just. I, I, I knew that would get you. <laughs> this is the whole I, time. I, I we know. all knew. Everyone knows. <laughs> I, I'm like, three people in the Discord have also said, Ben, it's like this chapter was written for you. And I'm like, I know. I don't know. If, I know it's narcissistic to think of it that way, but like. I cried too, Ben. I, I cried too. Good, good. I it got was, me. It was, yeah. It was like this lovely little gift at the end of the book being like, here's one last Eshenai, and it's just the most beautiful thing you could she could possibly have gotten. Um, my, oh my gosh. other. <laughs> my other favorite moment which is kind of almost like when i think of this book i'm probably going to think of this moment more than any others where it's the beginning of part five and i was really worried that you were going to steal it evgeny but it's the bit before the bit that you were talking about when kaladin is on his way to fight the pursuer and get that last that last that final fight and he just he picks up he puts in his coat he picks up his feet and he just stops hiding he just yeah. marches through Irithiru and people are noticing, people are like cheering him on, people follow him, he gathers crowds. I'm like, this is Kaladin Stormblessed. This is the, the man, the myth, the legend yeah. coming and he is, he is done with the darkness of the rest of the book and he is coming to save the goddamn day. And like, I, yeah. that's, that's the moment I think of where everyone's like, everyone's following him and no one's stopping him. It's just, it's just... This is why I read these books for moments like this. As, as you said, it does get better. And that's the moment, like the light appears at the end of the tunnel and you're like, yes, they're, they're, it can get better. And here's Kaladin to show us the way. 